Today, testing confirmed that a patient here in New York City had tested positive for Ebola. The patient is now here in Bellevue Hospital. We want to state at the outset there is no reason for New Yorkers to be alarmed. Ebola is an extremely hard disease to contract. It is transmitted only through contact with an infected person's blood or other bodily fluids, not through casual contact. New Yorkers who have not been exposed to an infected person's bodily fluids are not at all at risk. And we want to emphasize that New York City has the world's strongest public health system, the world's leading medical experts, and the world's most advanced medical equipment. All right, that's uh, Mayor de Blasio uh, speaking earlier today. And we're going to get to our great panel in just a second. But before we do that, I want to tell you about the great new book by Newsmax contributor and political analyst Dick Morris. We've been telling you about that. And it's called Power Grab, Obama's Dangerous Plan for a One-Party Nation. And I am strongly urging you to go get your copy of this Amazon number one bestseller. And it's so easy to do it. All you got to do is go to Power Grab. 411.com. That's powergrab411.com and get your copy today. All right. Joining us is the chairman of the Committee to Reduce Infectious Deaths, Dr. Betsy McCoy, and leading national expert in wellness, disease prevention, and bioidentical hormone therapies, Dr. Erica Schwartz. And uh, welcome to both of you. Let's start with what we heard, um, uh, Erica, from um, uh, Mayor de, de Blasio. Uh, you're in New York. I'm in New York. Do you feel uh, confident? I feel confident because I'm not worried about anything. I think um, it's a matter of giving people the right information so people can stop worrying about things. So I think that, you know, I was thinking of two things that would be information that people are not getting. One of them is how come um, people can't infect other people while they're incubating? And I think the answer to that is really because you can get a viral infection like the flu and you're not going to communicate it until there are enough virus particles in your body that you start experiencing symptoms. So until you have symptoms, you cannot communicate a flu, Ebola, viral infections in general. So that's number one. And number two I was thinking about was about what do we do to prevent people who come back from actually helping people in West Africa from making us worried and scared. Right, well, I want to get to that. I do want to get to that, but I want to, I want to concentrate first on this, and I want to, I want to ask uh, uh, Betsy, um, you know, uh, Eric is right, and, and it, or we all presume that, that that's how you get it or when you can get it, but uh, then again, this, this doctor, um, you know, wasn't feeling well riding the train, eating in restaurants, going bowling, uh, taking a taxi. Uh, we don't know exactly when this, this quote-unquote symptoms actually started. What, was he sweating? Did he have a little tiny fever while he was in the restaurant or the train? Who knows? Well, all that's true, but the risk for most Americans of getting Ebola is really near zero. That doesn't mean it's not uh, something of real concern because healthcare workers are at risk. And my concern is that a patient with Ebola will be treated at a hospital in New York in this case or somewhere else, and then healthcare workers will contract the infection just like the two nurses at Texas Health Presbyterian contracted it. The fact is that hospitals in this country are not ready for Ebola. Hospitals that can't stop the spread of staph and C. diff, infections that race through hospitals killing 75,000 people a year in our country, they can't stop Ebola right. either. They're not ready for such a uh, lethal virus. And that's why it's important for us to help the people in Africa, but keep this virus in Africa. Right, and Dr. Uh, uh, that's, uh, Dr. Schwartz, that's, that's uh, a problem. I mean, you, you, you see patients every day in your practice. Uh, Betsy's absolutely right, and this, this is a, a worrisome thing. Well, I think what's really worrisome is, you know, the political climate, it's about what the government is doing, what the individual protocols are, like in the case of um, this physician in New York. Um, you know, he followed the Physicians Without Borders. I mean, I can't blame him, and I'm not protecting him because he's a doctor. I think what he was doing is, you know, he did the right thing according to their protocols. So I think the debate should really be about what the protocols for quarantine are, and that w that's where we should focus and stop scaring people because, as Betsy just said, there, the risk of us getting Ebola is minimal. All right, None. But, but we thing do is, need to protect our hospitals. Exactly. And it's putting our finger on the important thing. Well, where's the, the correct protocol? Well, well, why I hasn't the urge, CDC given us correct protocol I by now? It's November. I would urge Doctors Without Borders, 
the Red Cross and other groups, the World Samaritan's Health Organization, First, right, that right. are sponsoring volunteers in Africa to right. make sure that doctors and nurses who are caring for these patients are quarantined before they get on a commercial airliner and come to North America or to Europe, or in some cases right. it's Australia. The fact is, when I spoke with Doctors Without Borders this morning, they told me that uh, a caregiver, doctor or nurse, could be treating Ebola patients in the morning, and they are not expected to have any waiting period before they go to the airport and get on a That's flight to insane. go home. That's All right, we're going to come back with part two of the panel. We'll continue with Dr. Betsy McCoy and Dr. Erica Schwartz. Don't go away. We're coming right back.